For as long as I can remember, I have dreamed of visiting the island of Madagascar. I longed to see if there is still hope for this dying land. I wanted to meet the people who call this hallowed ground home. And to experience the island's few remaining forests before they too are forever lost to the ever encroaching wasteland that humanity always leaves in its wake. And of course, to see all of the unique and wonderful animals that have existed only in my dreams. For 88 million years, life has evolved here in near complete isolation. It is home to an astonishing 5% of the total known species, with around 90% of its wildlife found nowhere else on Earth. However, there are none of the large animals found on mainland Africa. There are no giraffes or elephants, none of the big cats, and no monkeys or gorillas either. There did exist a giant ostrich-like bird prior to human settlement. Fossils reveal that the elephant bird stood taller than 3 meters or 10 feet and went extinct in the 17th or 18th century. It is believed that human activity was almost certainly the cause. Today, Madagascar is overpopulated, and the fate of the elephant bird is playing out over and over again in the few remaining wild spaces. As of 2012, the population is estimated to exceed 22 million people. This is the capital city of Madagascar, Antananarivo. It is the largest city in the country, with a density of 22,000 people per square kilometer. It is polluted. The air is choking. But people continue to build and expand here, and everywhere else on the island. One thing is certain. My dreams lie far from this city. Rural Madagascar is a patchwork of small villages that appear as if from out of nowhere after long expanses of barren land. Here, subsistence farming dominates the landscape and the Great Island's slow and agonizing death from a thousand cuts comes clearly into focus. The great forests are gone, along with the animals that called them home. They were long ago harvested for their prized woods, or slashed and burned to make room for more people, and thousands upon thousands of rice terraces. The animals have lost their homes. But within this destruction, there exist rays of hope small islands of unspoiled wilderness. Constantly threatened, these few remaining refuges are where the creatures of my dreams dwell. I planned my arrival in Madagascar to coincide with the rainy season, when life is most abundant. Perhaps Madagascar's most famous residents are its lemurs. Over 100 species and subspecies exist on this island, and they are all endemic. If you're very lucky, you may catch a glimpse of one leaping overhead, or even descending to the lower reaches to feed on fruits and other plant matter. Lemurs are primates endemic to Madagascar. The extremely variable and seasonal environments found throughout the island have led to a diverse suite of adaptations that rival that of all other primate groups. This is the greater bamboo lemur happily munching away on its favorite food. This species is critically endangered, the highest level of risk before being designated as extinct in the wild. It was actually already believed to be extinct until a remnant population was rediscovered in 1986. Here in this peaceful bamboo forest, these last remaining individuals are blissfully unaware of their dire situation as they eagerly consume the soft shoots of the bamboo. Surprisingly, this species of bamboo contains high amounts of toxic cyanide. The typical amount of cyanide consumed by an adult bamboo lemur in one day is more than enough to kill an adult human. No one knows exactly how this animal, so
so close to extinction has adapted to survive such a lethal dose. Some noise overhead signals the arrival of two golden bamboo lemurs, another endangered species. But they pose no threat to this larger lemur, so eating quickly recommences. When food is in abundance, these lemurs spend a large portion of their day locating food and will happily put both hands to use. But these resourceful animals can quickly find and eat all of the shoots in the nearby area and must eventually move on to greener pastures. The rainy season is a time of plenty, and the bamboo lemurs aren't the only ones enjoying the bounty. This is a female red-bellied lemur. She is getting as much food as she can now as the breeding season is quickly approaching. She will need to store as much energy as she can if she is to successfully carry a baby to term. Red-bellied lemurs are one of the few lemur species to form monogamous pair bonds, and here, feeding alongside, is her mate. The dramatic white patches just in front of the eyes easily identify males. Females lack these white patches and are lighter in color on the neck and chin. A monogamous pair such as this may spend over 20 years of their lives together. During this plentiful time of year, even the babies can come second to gathering food. Mouse lemurs are the smallest primate in the world, and this is a baby. It has been hidden amongst the branches by its parents while they busily search for fruit nearby. However, not all are as hurried as the mouse lemur to gather food. This mongoose lemur seems to be doing its best impression of Aesop's fabled grasshopper. And as for these endangered cockerels shafox, well, leaping takes out the better part of the day. Shafox are masters of aerial acrobatics, capable of spanning gaps between trees of 10 meters or 30 feet or more, and are also quite skilled at leaping to spiny trees while precisely placing their hands and feet to prevent injuring themselves. But to see some of the most unusual animals, one must venture out at night. Indeed, that is the only time to see Madagascar's most famous nocturnal lemur. Hidden behind these leaves is an eye eye. The eye eye is arguably the world's most bizarre animal, both in terms of appearance and behavior. When it is active in foraging for food, the eye eye fills the vacant position of a woodpecker by using its chisel-like teeth and a specialized long and thin finger to chew into bark and extract insects. The eye eye is threatened not only due to habitat loss, but this harmless creature is long believed to be a bad omen by superstitious villagers and is often unceremoniously dispatched. Madagascar abounds with chameleon species. Now ordinarily during the daytime, they're high up in the canopy making them near impossible to see. However, during the night, many species descend to the lower reaches of their trees making them particularly easy to spot with a headlamp. Here we have a very small but very charming big nosed chameleon. This is one of the smallest arboreal or tree dwelling chameleon species with total length including tail rarely exceeding 10 centimeters. The name, big-nosed chameleon, seems appropriate given the large protuberance on this male. These adornments are almost always only possessed by males and are used during territorial disputes, combat between males for mating privileges, and also as a means for females to judge the quality of their mate. They can be extremely colorful, such as the bright red nose of this blue-legged chameleon, or divided into separate, distinct projections as possessed by this endangered, two-banded chameleon. But it is this rhinoceros chameleon that may be the most aptly named species. Male chameleons are generally more robust, colorful, or boldly patterned. They are often larger than females and have enlarged head casks, the helmet-like structure on the top of the head, and sometimes possess long, spiny projections running along the back. This is a male Austelets chameleon, arguably the largest species in the world, with males capable of exceeding 60 centimeters, or 2 feet in total length. Here we see a sleeping adult female Austelets chameleon, and sleeping just behind her, a large adult male. The physical differences in coloration between the sexes are quite obvious. The sex of juvenile chameleons is often difficult to determine prior to maturity. This immature chameleon, which is clearly having a terrible night's sleep, is too young to determine sex based on a cursory inspection alone. It is a common misconception that chameleons change their color to match their surroundings. In reality, this adaptation is used for communication purposes. For example, this color changing ability is rapidly employed to communicate aggression, such as with a rival male, or to advertise whether a female is receptive to mating. This small side striped chameleon can help clarify this point, 
as he presents a very differently colored and patterned side of his body towards what he perceives as a threat. The other side of his body, facing away from the threat, effectively remains neutrally colored. Chameleons are built for a life in the trees. Their tail is prehensile and can be used as a fifth limb when needed. The digits of their hands and feet are fused and opposed in such a way as to provide the perfect grip on tree branches. They are also unique among other lizards in that their bodies are raised high above their legs, making it much easier to navigate through the trees. This is a large adult male Parsons chameleon, the other contender for world's largest species. About the size of a house cat, even this big chameleon can deftly maneuver his way through the branches. Chameleons walk with a slow, halting motion to mimic leaves and branches swaying in a breeze. They will even time their movements to coincide with a gust of wind. Baby chameleons are miniature versions of their parents, and they even take their very first steps with the same deliberate swaying motion as adults. All chameleons are skilled hunters, with sophisticated stereoscopic vision that they use to locate and target their prey. This O'Shaughnessy's chameleon shows us how the eyes swivel independently from each other, offering a 360 degree field of view. With such a stealthy predator, it is difficult for prey to detect danger until it is too late. After locating their prey, in this case a big cicada fly, chameleons swing both eyes forward so that they can perfectly judge the distance before unleashing a sticky projectile tongue that, when accurate, hits the insect and quickly retracts, pulling the seized prey directly into the chameleon's mouth. This all happens in the blink of an eye. Not all chameleon species are big and colorful, but here, close to the forest floor, there exists a very special creature. It's a dwarf chameleon. No bigger than a pinky finger, this brown leaf chameleon is among the smallest chameleon species in the world. They spend most of their time on the forest floor hunting for food in the leaf litter, but in all other regards, their adaptations are identical to their bigger and more colorful cousins. Chameleons are not the only masters of disguise here in Madagascar. Another group of lizards, the Europlatus or leaf-tailed geckos, are second to none in terms of their mimicry. In fact, there's one just above me on a branch, and you would never know it was there. It isn't until this mossy leaf-tailed gecko decides to change position that its presence becomes known. Here is the same gecko from a more revealing angle. All leaf-tailed geckos are nocturnal and arboreal. They spend their days sleeping in branches or flat against the trunks of trees. When properly positioned, these geckos practically disappear. This species possesses delicate flaps of skin along the jaw, body, and limbs, completely breaking up the gecko's outline, and, when at rest, rendering it invisible. This giant leaf-tailed gecko is a perfect match for the lichen-covered branches throughout the rainforest. This species also possesses the dermal flap along the flanks of its body, Notice how well the feet blend in against the bark of the tree branch. Some leaf-tailed geckos have evolved to camouflage better where small trees, bushes, and woody branches dominate the environment. This is one of the rarest of all leaf-tailed gecko species. It's an endangered Gunther's leaf-tailed gecko. The satanic leaf-tailed gecko is so named due to the horn-like projections above its eyes. This particular variety combines the textured quality of lichen and moss with a pattern reminiscent of dead leaves. Interestingly, this is also a satanic leaf-tailed gecko. The variety here perfectly mimics a dead leaf and is nearly impossible to detect in bushes and low-lying vegetation, but will make its presence known as it hunts for insects at night. Only under the cover of darkness do the leaf-tailed geckos come out of hiding, to perch themselves on an open branch and wait for prey, or, in the case of this eager male, to chase after a female. But sadly, it looks like luck is not on his side tonight. She got away. The giant leaf-tailed gecko is particularly interesting because it has more teeth, over 300, than any living terrestrial vertebrate. Another peculiar feature seen here is the complete lack of an eyelid. In fact, many gecko species, including the leaf-tailed geckos, lack eyelids. In their place is a modified transparent scale, called a brill, that covers and protects the eye. Given life in the rainforest, sometimes the brill needs a good cleaning to remove anything from debris, to the dozens of tiny red parasites feeding on blood along the edge of this gecko's eye. 
But how does a gecko manage to clean its eyes? Well, since they lack the ability to blink or rub their eyes with their hands, the answer is simple. They use their tongue. Many of the world's most endangered turtle and tortoise species call Madagascar home. And here, amongst the noisy water birds, lives Madagascar's only endemic turtle species, the Madagascar big-headed turtle. These are young big-headed turtles and are extremely skittish at such a vulnerable age. It makes sneaking up on them extremely difficult. These older females are a little more likely to stand their ground, but still ultimately retreat to the safety of the water. This huge adult male big-headed turtle, however, especially worthy of his title, moves for no one. But even adult males can be shy, and to see one basking like this is rare. They prefer to rest in shallow water or float at the surface. Their eyes and nostrils are situated high on top of their head, which allows them to see and breathe while remaining mostly submerged. This turtle species is critically endangered and is included on the Turtle Conservation Fund's top 25 most endangered turtles list. In addition to the constant threat of habitat loss, this species is heavily exploited for food in Madagascar and is often illegally caught and smuggled into Asia for the traditional medicine market. Entire lakes where this species once thrived are now empty of all turtles. Some of the world's most endangered tortoises are endemic to Madagascar, including the radiated tortoise and the flat-backed spider tortoise. Both species are critically endangered. However, in a remote region of Madagascar, the world's most endangered tortoise makes its last stand. This is the Anganoke or plowshare tortoise. This species is predicted to become extinct in the wild within the next decade. In March of 2013, 54 tortoises were poached and smuggled into Thailand. The population in the wild is estimated to be fewer than 400 animals and is declining fast. Historically, distribution and population numbers were reduced due to overharvesting and habitat destruction. Their homes were indiscriminately burned by people to improve grazing conditions for cattle. However, a major and ongoing threat comes from illegal collection for the international pet trade. As the black market pet trade's greed for rarity worsens, so too does the fate of this seemingly condemned tortoise. Madagascar is home to some of the world's truly most strange and beautiful animals. New species are frequently discovered in what's left of Madagascar's forests. But since these unexplored areas are vanishing faster than ever, we are losing species even before we become aware of their existence. But there may still be hope. Organizations work tirelessly to slow the decline of many endangered species. A breeding program for the plowshare tortoise exists in Madagascar, and in an attempt to increase the wild population, this program has successfully released into the wild tortoises that were reared in captivity. These same organizations educate local people and teach them to celebrate and preserve the environment around them. The people of this small village in the northwestern part of the country are celebrating World Wetlands Day. It is a social event involving everyone in the village and it helps increase awareness of the natural world on which we all ultimately depend. Local people are also given marketable skills that allow them to sell their wares in order to survive without exploiting the remaining wilderness. There is no one way to save the island from being lost forever. Education and awareness are of paramount importance. It is easy to ignore a problem when you can't see it, but now you've seen it, and it does not go away without action. Apathy has gotten us this far, but it is not too late.